Hey, my name is Sean Lazar. Hi, my name is Bob Wilkin. And um, so what, 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 something new happened. Nice, pleasant surprise. What was it last week, last weekend? Last Saturday. Last Saturday. You got to do a, a, an interview, a debate actually, on Moody Radio. Right. Uh, hosted, and wh whose show was it again? Judy Roy's. Judy Roy's, right? And it no. was up for debate. Julie Roy. Julie Roy's up, up for, for debate. debate. And you can listen to that at upfordebate.com yeah. or something like that. Uh, you're debating who? That was uh, Dr. Matthew Bates who wrote a book uh, called Salvation by Allegiance Alone. Salvation by Allegiance Alone. Now he is, he claims to be Protestant or Evangelical or, or both? Well, he claims to be Protestant. On page six of his book, he says he's a Protestant. However, he teaches at a Catholic school called right. Quincy University. He got his PhD from a Catholic school from University of Notre Dame. Right. And his theology is Roman Catholic. In fact, he says on both pages six and nine that he's hopeful that this book will help reconcile Catholics and Protestants. So even though <laughs> yeah. he calls himself a Protestant, yeah. I think he's pretty and, friendly with Catholics. And I think he's gonna, he hopes for reconciliation by basically seriously deforming the gospel. And that's a good way to I put mean, it. I mean, really, it's, it's it is. taking going away from the Reformation, Reformation's recovery, or mostly recovery of justification by faith apart from works. And basically, he just, he muddies the waters. He absolutely does, and even someone like Tom Schreiner, uh, who's at Southern Seminary, and who holds to a pretty strong view of Lordship Salvation, he reviews this book, and he says that Bates goes too far. That basically, Bates takes the attention off of Jesus and puts it on us. We're the ones who have to be loyal. We're the ones, not Jesus, we have to be loyal, we have to be faithful. And he says, ultimately, what he should do is say justification is by faith alone, or salvation is by faith alone, but true faith produces works. That's where Schreiner's coming from, but Bates goes further. Right, because Bates says, if, if, I, if I understood this correctly, you know, nine times out of ten, probably, when you believe something, you're just persuaded that something is true. You know, that's what we would say. When, right. When you're, to be eternally saved, you need to be persuaded that Jesus' promise of eternal life is true. And he would agree, nine times out of ten, that's what the word means, except when it comes to salvation. When it comes to salvation, belief suddenly means allegiance. Is that's that right? What, that's exactly what he says. He says, whenever you're in a salvific context, then, sal then pistis, or faith, doesn't mean faith, but pistis means allegiance. And I'm sure the Roman Catholics love to hear that. I'm sure they're probably <laughs> clapping over that one. And the thing is, allegiance basically is a pledge of loyalty, right? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. That means I'm pledging my loyalty to the United States of America. And he's saying all through the book that in order to gain what he calls final salvation... We need to be loyal to Jesus. In fact, if, if people go listen to the uh, debate, go to the 42-minute mark, and you will hear him say that in Romans chapter 2, verses 6 through 10, the Apostle Paul says, we will be saved by works, you know, if we continue in good works until the end. And so he sees salvation as future, and he also sees it as something which is conditioned on works. So, so the first thing, I think there's probably two things we need to say here. The first thing is, Bates is 100% wrong on the meaning of faith. Right. Faith right. is, you're, you're, you're believing what Jesus is saying is true. His promise is true. So he's totally wrong about that, right? Yeah, let me make a quick comment yeah. on that and say, he goes to the dictionary rather than going to context to try to prove his point. Right. And he says that uh, BDAG says that the number one meaning is faithfulness or fidelity. And what he fails to point out is that under its first meaning, uh, BDAG only lists nine New Testament passages. It has over 180 on its second meaning, which is faith. Right. And under the first meaning of faithfulness yeah. or fidelity, guess what? It's not about our fidelity right. or our fi faithfulness, but God's fidelity and God's and faithfulness. And that's what we're believing in. Right. We're the, believing him to keep his promise. The, the dictionary says yeah. that the faithfulness is in the object of faith. Mm -hmm. The object of faith is faithful. Mm -hmm. Not the, the believer is not the one who's faithful. It's the one believed who is faithful. 
So, so, so the first thing is he's he's totally wrong on, on the meaning of faith. And if you believe that, I mean, he he clearly believes in salvation by works. That is salvation by works. If you think you need to be saved by uh, allegiance to Jesus by having your whole life committed to Him and whatnot, that involves doing things. That's salvation by works. Okay. And Paul said it's faith plus nothing. No, not even circumcision, which is like the most passive something done to you type of work. Not even by, even by that. It's by faith apart from any kind of work. But the second thing we should say is, we believe we should be we should have allegiance to Jesus in the free grace movement. Absolutely. We believe that. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's like we're not against that. We think if once you believe in Jesus, the natural response is to live a life of faithfulness to him. You know, when I grew up, I don't I don't think it's this way in the public schools anymore, but we would say the Pledge of Allegiance every day in elementary school. And in a sense, in church, we're pledging our allegiance to Jesus Christ every time we partake of communion. Every time we partake of the Lord's Supper, we're remembering that he died for us. We're remembering that he shed his blood for us. We're remembering that he's coming again. And so, to me, each time I partake of the Lord's Supper... I'm renewing my allegiance to him. That, that's an appropriate thing to do. In fact, if we didn't, then our attitude toward the Lord's Supper would be wrong. We'd be bringing judgment upon ourselves. So sure, we need allegiance to Christ, but in order to please him, in order to have eternal rewards. If we now somehow think that's how we're born again, well, now, now we're preaching what Paul would call a false gospel. Well, if um, you want to hear more about that debate, go to upfordebate.com. Look up the debate between Bob and Matthew Bates and judge for yourselves. Who is being more faithful to Scripture? Is it salvation by faith in Jesus or is salvation by allegiance to Jesus? Amen.